Today we want to focus on this thought. When begin these, when we do these fasts, I like to preach on fasting for a couple of reasons. One is to build my faith. <laughs> you say, if you're going to do something, you need to know it's in God's word. Can you say Amen? And you need to know that God honors it and God blesses it. And boy, when I read these stories, how God honored praying and fasting, uh, prayer with fasting, it really builds my faith to believe, well, he'll do it for me too. And we know he's no respecter of persons. And the New Testament says the Old Testament was written for example. And some people just want to take the Old Testament and throw it in, in the trash. Uh, but it says I can get good examples from the Old Testament. And it says the Old Testament was written for our learning. You can learn how to be blessed and prosper by studying the Old Testament. You don't throw it away. It's true that Jesus Christ fulfilled all the legalism. Uh, he bore away your sins, so you don't have to do animal sacrifices. You do not have to be circumcised if you're a man because the circumcision is now of the heart. Uh, but the Ten Commandments are still for today. And by the way, the all ten are repeated in the uh, New Testament. And... Uh, uh, and uh, all of the word of God is still the word of God. Can you say amen? amen? And we need to listen to these stories and believe God. So when we fast and pray, the yokes are broken, the word says. Healing quickly appears and our prayers are answered. An ungodly lifestyle can cancel out the results of praying and fasting. So we need to repent of anything in our lives that's not pleasing to God. But godly fasting produces blessings and deliverance. Isaiah 58, 3, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Now, when they say they humble themselves, especially in the Old Testament, it means they humble themselves with fasting. And in some places, it actually says that. They humble themselves with fasting, and they say, Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed. And the first verse there, verse 3 says, Why have we fasted? So he, they're definitely talking about fasting food in a way to humble themselves. There it is right in front of you. Verse 4, Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. We cannot expect God to answer our prayers when we're being mean to each other. You know, and when we're criticizing each other and condemning each other and making fun of each other for every little mistake, we're supposed to be exhorting one another and encouraging one another. Can you say amen? Just like this church does. I mean, that's who we are. We do love each other and care for each other, but we need to re recognize that God says you must live godly if you expect me to honor your time of fasting and praying. I'm amazed at some Christians today, their life is not measuring up to the Word of God at all. Some of them living with people not even married, you know, and they expect God just to bless them. But well, my, my Bible indicates God's not going to bless me if I don't live right. right. Your fasting ends in quarreling and fra uh, strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. God says your fast is not working because you are full of selfish ambition and strife. Uh, by the way, how, how are you treating your wife? Amen. And how are you treating your husband? Amen. You know, I, I was trying to behave myself this morning. I said, Lord, I'm fasting and praying. I need to be good to Dottie. Help me. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's easy to be good to her, both of us. God expects us to live a godly life. Agape love means self-giving love. We're supposed to be helping each other and blessing each other and encouraging each other, uh, not beating up on each other. Amen. Well, you don't know what they did. Well, I don't need to know what they did. We need to love each other. Amen. <laughs> if you obey my voice, these blessings will come on thee and overtake thee. The Lord says, if you obey my voice and love people and be good to people and and keep my commandments, then blessings will come your way. And praying and fasting is a part of that because that is a big do. When you give and when you pray and when you fast, Jesus said, your Father will reward you. Amen. Fasting can produce victory and healing. Isaiah 58, 6, let's follow through. He says, if you do fasting for the right reasons, 
here's what will happen. Is not this the, fa this the kind of fasting I have uh, 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 chosen for you? And it's obvious they're talking about fasting. It actually says it. Why have we fasted? It is, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to lose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Don't let this discourage you if you've had sin or addictions or strongholds in your life. Uh, he's not uh, condemning. He's just saying you need to repent and turn back to God. But if you fast, God will break those things off of your life. God will break the drugs and the alcohol and illicit sex. And he'll break the addictions and the spirits of rebellion. And he'll break those things off of us if we fast and pray. Is not this the kind of fasting... I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Fasting is designed to set the oppressed free and to break every bondage. Amen. Verse 7, Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer and, uh, with shelter? God says while you're fasting, I expect you to be generous and not to be greedy. That's one reason we encourage people during the time of praying and fasting, be generous, be a giver. <laughs> and uh, after all, that's what Jesus said. When you give and when you pray and when you fast, your Heavenly Father will reward you for each of those three things. And so you don't want to leave one out. Amen. When you pray, when you fast, when you give. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Read that with me. Your healing will quickly appear. Well, I'm sick. I can't fast when I'm sick. <clears throat> well, do you want to be healed? <laughs> and uh, if I feel, you know, that the devil's trying to hit me with a sickness, man, uh, I, I, if I'm not really fasting up the way I, I need to be, then I get to fasting at the <clears throat> beginning of this year, last year, that ended Friday. <laughs> 2021, <clears throat> I had been down, my daughter and I had been down to my mama's house for Christmas, and all the family came in, and uh, one of my brothers had been to church, and uh, he got COVID from the preacher and his wife, I mean, no, you better stay away from preachers, <clears throat> and so he brought it uh, into the house, and everybody was sick with COVID. And uh, it's Christmas time, and the day after Christmas, I said, I know what the devil's up to, and I'm going to start my fast now. And uh, God healed every one of us, including my mama, <laughs> you know, that, that was told she had congestive heart failure, and now she has COVID. God healed her. I mean, God worked miracles all over the place. That thing tried to come on me. I said, you're not putting it on me. Your healing will quickly appear. See, I tell these stories sometimes I don't tell you the whole story because I don't have time. But a big reason is fasting. Amen. Somebody say something. And I don't know if you're scared to death of fasting. And I was too. I, when I started fasting, I was six feet and one half inch tall. And I weighed 148 pounds. That's how heavy I was when I started this church. And then go on a long fast. People said, you're going to die. I didn't die. I just got healthier. Amen. I used to be sickly. And I hadn't been really seriously sick in years. And I remember one day, after a 21-day fast, I got in the shower. I couldn't find my belly button. I, Where is that? It was way back there. <laughs> oh, if I fast, it'll kill me. What's killing us is the food. Somebody say amen. amen. Not way more now. It's very interesting. Around uh, November, I start eating everything that don't run away. I'm telling you. And uh, <laughs> my weight starts going up. And what's wrong with me? And then I remember, oh, my body knows what I'm about to do. <laughs> so it's getting ready. And so I start eating everything. And I get up to around 180, 182. And I said, look, you're not going any heavier than this. And uh, then I start to fast, and everything's okay. Amen. But your body gets conditioned to it. Can you say amen? amen. And it's a healthy thing. 
because it's a way to eliminate all those poisons in your body. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will, break, will quickly appear. Y'all pray for me because I stop telling all these stories. I know we'll, we won't get through any of it, <laughs> or at least very little. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. Verse 9, then you will call and the Lord will answer. When you, when you do what? When you fast for the right reasons. And you have repented of the things in your life that's not pleasing to God. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. Don't let the devil put condemnation on you. He'll shut you down with that condemnation. All of us can find something to condemn ourselves over. You get rid of it, it does no good. Cast it out. <laughs> condemnation, get out. Devil, take your condemnation and get out. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. Ah. the Lord will guide you always he will satisfy your needs you see when we fast and pray the yokes are broken healing quickly appears and our prayers are answered prayer with fasting works for all of us that's one reason you don't see more miracles in the modern church is because we've left one of the three out when you give and when you pray and when you fast which one are you going to leave out I recommend you do all three. Amen. I went to Seoul Korea, Seoul, Korea many years ago and went to Prayer Mountain, the great church there. Uh, Dr. Paul Young Cho, whatever his name, it, it turned out to be, he changed his name because his father got upset with him, disowned him or something. But anyway, I went to the Prayer Mountain there. And I mean, there's hundreds of people everywhere. It's like a giant hospital of all the sick people, cancer and everything else. And their treatment was fasting. They trained people how to fast. And they're sick and dying. They would take them to Prayer Mountain. And you never heard so many testimonies. These people getting healed left and right. That was the remedy for their sickness is prayer and fasting. Our remedy is, oh, eat this bowl of soup. You've got to keep your nutrition up. Eat this, eat that. Uh, that's not the example. They were sitting on Prayer Mountain. They did give them stuff to keep their nutrition up. I mean, they didn't want to starve them to death. But at the same time, fasting healed them. Praying it, God healed them because they're obeying Him with prayer and fasting. Amen. There's no magic in fasting, it's just called obedience. Amen. Well, I don't see any reason to fast. Well, that's exactly who I was. I don't see any reason to pray even. I had a hard time even believing in prayer. But boy, I believe in it now. About half the church has been healed the last few weeks with me praying for them on the phone, not just because of me, because we're grinning together in church praying. <laughs> I mean, prayer works. If it didn't, some of you wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. And when you add the booster, how many of you ever heard of booster shots? <laughs> What's the booster to prayer? It's fasting. Amen. So we call this prayer with fasting. It's about praying and seeking the face of God. Joel chapter 1 verse 14, look at this. Declare a holy fast. That's exactly what we've done. Well, why ain't everybody doing it? I don't know. I just got to do what God tells me to do. Declare a holy fast. Call it sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land of the house of the Lord your God. Cry out to the Lord. You see, the purpose is to cry out to God, to pray and seek his face. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. When you, when you want to get a hold of God bad enough to quit eating, that's pretty serious praying. Can you say amen? amen. We have called a sacred assembly to cry out to God here now. Joy chapter 2 verse 12. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting. There is any doubt what he's talking about? He's talking about fasting food. And weeping and mourning with fasting and repentance. If it works, if it worked for God's people then, it'll work for God's people now. Amen. The Old New Testament says the Old Testament is our example. It's written for our learning. Verse 13. Render your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. You may say, man, I have really messed up. I see destruction coming into my life, into my family. Listen, this says he's slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity, especially when people obey him in prayer and fasting. Relents. 
I know he said, well, everything's fixed. It's just everything's fixed. But this says he relents. He says, call it sacred to fast, and he will relent. Well, I've caused all these problems because of drugs and alcohol. I came to tell you today, you can be healed and delivered and set free from that even though you did it. He'll break the strongholds of hell off of your life. He, you see, he grants mercy when, when we repent and pray with fasting. Verse 17, let the priests say, spare your people, O Lord. Deliver your people, O Lord. Verse 18, then the Lord will be jealous over his land and take pity on his people. Verse 19, the Lord will reply to them, I am sending you grain, new wine, and oil, enough to satisfy you fully, he says. If you stop your fussing and fighting with each other and really fast and pray for the right reasons, I'll take care of everything. Amen. I'm just reading it. Verse 20, I would drive the northern army far from you. How many won't God take care of the northern army? Amen. Russia. <laughs> I would drive the northern army far from you. God says, call a sacred assembly fast and pray to me. And I will supply your need and deliver you from Iran, from Russia, from China, from North Korea. Can you say amen? amen? You see, we need sacred assemblies all across this country. And each year, I think we're getting a few more churches that are joining in uh, by beginning the year with fasting and praying and seeking the face of God. I'm not worried about uh, Russia and China and North Korea and all those enemies that we have. I'm concerned about the church not doing what it's supposed to be doing. That's what concerns me. The church has gone to sleep all over America, and many churches now tolerate sin, and, and it's okay. This says it's not okay. Manasseh, 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse 10. If you've really messed up, I mean messed up big time, you need to hear this. And if you're thinking about messing up big time, you need to hear this you know, and not do it. Because when you keep messing up, it's going to bring judgment. Well, I don't believe that God brings judgment. Well, that's okay. You can believe anything you want to be, but the Bible teaches judgment. And just because you say, I don't believe it, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Now look, Manasseh, 2 Chronicles chapter 30, 33, verse 10. The Lord spoke to Manasseh. He was, king. he was probably the most wicked king Israel ever had. I mean, he was brutal. He'd murder you. He'd do anything. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. Somebody needs to pay attention today. <laughs> We're going to avoid a lot of trouble if we pay attention to the Word of God. You see, they would not repent. Verse 11, so the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. I mean, this guy was done. There's no way he was ever going to come back and be king except one way. You see, God brought judgment on him and the people because they were very wicked. They weren't just hitting people with their fists. They were murdering people and worshiping foreign gods and all kind of wicked things. And God brought judgment. But remember that word, Relent. 12, uh, verse 12, in his distress, he, Manasseh, sought the favor of the Lord, his God, and humbled himself greatly with fasting. It's, when it says humble themselves, it's with fasting. I showed that at the beginning here. Uh, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves with fasting, and you haven't done anything? Well, here Manasseh, he repents, and he begins to seek God with prayer and fasting. So the Lord brought judge, brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria wonder what God's going to bring about against this country if we don't get our act together and turn back to God Amen. we've been blessed so long we can't imagine us not being blessed but I'm telling you right now we're not being blessed very well I mean I've never heard any such a thing as a pandemic that lasts two years and going into the third year never had anything like that not in my lifetime. Now, I've been around a long time. And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his in entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back. 
He fasted and prayed with all of his heart. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. <laughs> What's it going to take to prove to us that he is God? You see, this is one of the most wicked kings in Israel's history. When he humbled himself and began to fast and pray and seek God, God restored him to his throne. Fasting might be the difference you're looking for. And I can teach you how to do it. The uh, correct way. Remember, if you want to know how to fast, just ask somebody that never fasts, and they'll tell you exactly how to do it. Well, here's the way you've got to do it. Well, why don't you do it? Okay. <laughs> if you know how to do it, why aren't you doing it? Let's look at King David, 2 Samuel 12, 13. Chapter 12, verse 13. We do need to live godly lives. You know what David did? He saw his neighbor's beautiful wife, invited her over, uh, got her pregnant. And then to cover it up, today to cover it up, we have abortion. And that's what abortion is. In many cases, just cover up a sin. Do you all like it when I talk about sin? <laughs> David had her husband, Uriah, murdered to cover it up. But how many know there's an eye in the sky? And it's a Jewish eye. It's watching you, watching me. We don't get away with anything. So God sent Nathan over uh, to talk to David. And uh, David repented. Asked God to forgive him. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not, you are not going to die a murder went, the death, pen, death, the death penalty was the, uh, the penalty, death was the penalty for someone who'd murdered somebody and someone had committed adultery. But because of repented, Nathan says, God's not going to have you stoned to death. Now listen. But because the Lord has taken away your sin, you're not going to die. Even though when the Lord takes away your sin, that's a good thing. But because by doing this, you have made the enemies of the Lord show utter contempt, the son born to you will die. When we get caught up in sin, we embarrass Jesus Christ. Claim to be a Christian involved in sin. Or things that even look like sin. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he became ill. God does not put sickness or disease on good, godly people. But when we're living in rebellion to God, you can expect anything. And I read that in the Bible. From the Bible. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David. Uh, and he uh, had born to David and he became ill. The story ends pretty good, so just stay tuned because I want you to hear the good. <laughs> and not just the bad. David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted. Fasted food, laid on the ground. Wouldn't eat a bite. He fasted and went into his house and spent the night lying on the ground. Verse 18, on the seventh day the child died. No one can get away with sin. I don't care if you're the king or if you're the uh, 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 ditch digger putting in the pipes or whatever outside the house. It, God holds us accountable. We all are accountable to God. Well, you know, there's no judgment. God, he understands that God has provided shed blood so you can be forgiven. And you better take advantage of it. Amen. Somebody say amen. A lot of Christians are sickly and dying not because it's God's will. It's because they're not living godly. Well, I know them and they're wonderful people. You do not know their secret life. There's no way you could possibly know it. Well, I know they have faith. No, you don't. There's no way you could know they have faith. <laughs> then David got up from the ground after the baby died. His servants asked him, why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept. And now that the child is dead, you get up and eat. He hadn't eaten anything in all those days, laying on the ground. And he explains it. He answered. 
While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. He knew the power of fasting and praying. He knew that God relents, but not this time. David embarrassed. I mean, look how God had blessed David all of his life. And now he embarrassed God with that horrible sin. That's why we want to live God, because we embarrass Jesus. God had told him the child would die because of his sin. So why all the praying and fasting? You see, he knew fasting was powerful. He thought, I've got one chance. <laughs> Who knows? The Lord may be gracious and relent. Verse 24, then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and he went in to her and lay with her. She gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved him when they repented and turned back to God with fasting and praying. God wiped the slate clean like it had never happened. And David and Bathsheba, the, the woman he had an affair with and had her husband murdered, he gave, she gave birth to Solomon, Amen. the greatest king who ever lived. Amen. God, when they repented... With praying and fasting. God gave them another baby that wasn't just any average ordinary baby. Solomon. Can you say amen? When we repent and turn back to God, he'll treat us like we never did the sin. Now David did open the doors and bad things that came into his children and all that, but for him and Bathsheba, God blessed them and they gave birth together to Solomon. As we see in other places, David had a lifestyle of praying and fasting. In Psalm 109, verse 24, you know, if, if he needed to pray and fast, you know, we might need to. Jesus did say, when you fast, not if. He said, after I'm gone, my disciples will fast. How many of you are his disciples? Amen. You better be. You know? Psalm 109, verse 24, my knees give way from fasting. This is David, my body is thin and gaunt. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Verse 26, help me, O Lord my God. You see, he is praying with fasting. Save me in accordance with your love. He's fasting and praying. He's not just fasting. He's fasting and praying. Help me, O Lord my God. Verse 28, they may curse, but you will bless. You got people out to get you. Maybe you need to spend some time the next three weeks fasting and praying and seeking God and trust God to take care of your enemies. They may curse, but you will bless. When they attack, they will be out, they will be, they will be put to shame, but your servant will rejoice. You see, David knew fasting works. He fasted to have victory over his enemies. There's a guy, Tom Key. He was the director of uh, 911. He's the one who put the thing on. And he had been really involved in politics, and people were out to get him. He was Al Gore's campaign manager when he became senator. And so he was high up in lofty places. There were people out to get him. And he wound up in trouble. I won't go into any details. Uh, but he got fired. He, had, uh, he got fired from that job. His wife was divorcing him, and uh, she came to church during a fast. And she brought him, and they both repented, made things right with God. Amen. God restored their marriage. Hallelujah. And he got a great job after that, making a lot of money. He wound up working in Ireland, all over the place. God totally healed their marriage, restored them completely during the time of praying and fasting. Amen. We've got all kinds of stories like that. Can't tell them all today because they won't unplug the clock. <laughs> but God totally restored their marriage. And uh, not only restored, it restored him to a great career. Amen. Psalm 35, verse 13. Uh, Yet when they were ill, I put on, this is David, King David, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting when they were ill. He said, I fasted and prayed for my sick friends. David fasted for his 
friends, when they were sick, fasting was his lifestyle. Why? Because he knew it worked. Uh, a few, several years ago, there was a guy here in the church named Rick, and uh, he came to me, and he says, my sister's in Park West, and they think she's dead, but the machine is keeping her alive. Would you go pray for her? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> so I went over and went in, and boy, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of dead people, and this woman looked dead. I've done a lot of funerals. And she looked as dead as anybody I've ever seen dead. And uh, they wanted me to pray. <laughs> so I did. I laid hands on her and prayed. And boy, I felt the power of God had hit me, and I believe it hit her. Well, I know it did. And they told him, said, well, we got to unplug her. Uh, the only life, uh, there, she's not really alive. That machine is just uh, breathing for her, the respirator, whatever it was. And uh, so they said, we got to unplug her. So they uh, finally agreed to do it. And that day when I prayed, as I was leaving, I met her mother there in the uh, waiting room, or the, uh, 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 yeah, outside the intensive care unit. And I said, I don't know what happened, but I know God touched her. I felt the power of God. When they unplugged her, she sat up and asked for something to eat. Some of you remember that story, right? <laughs> If you remember that story, say amen. Amen. And it just so happened that Rick's wife was one of the intensive care nurses Hallelujah. on duty. And she heard the doctors talking. And they were, were saying to everybody, this is a miracle. Amen. This is a miracle. <laughs> Praying fasting. Well, I don't have time to fool with that. Well, okay. That's your, it's your decision, not mine. <laughs> The doctor said it was a miracle. And notice it says, I put on sackcloth. And why, do, why don't we do that today? Because Jesus changed that part. He says, do not do it to be seen of men. Right. Anything that indicates you're fasting, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Do it for the right reasons. Right. Y'all glad you came to church today? Second, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves with fasting and pray, exactly what it means, and seek my face, because that's what they always did. When they had a problem, they would always fast and pray. That's what they did. They humble themselves with fasting. All you got to do is read the Bible. It's very, very plain. Amen. If my people, and what do you think I'm reading today? <laughs> fast is all over the place. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then, there that wicked way is again. Turn from my wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Bill Bright, and you know who Bill Bright was? Uh, director of Campus Crusade for Christ, one of the greatest ministries ever in the world. He said nothing else can compare with the supernatural power and release that the supernatural power released when we fast and pray. He also said not only will fasting and prayer transform an individual or church, it can change the course of a nation. That's in his book, The Coming Revival. He went across this country uh, before he died, and he was challenging all of us preachers to fast 40 days. And uh, I was fasting 21 days, and I says, uh, buddy, that's enough. <laughs> but later on, the Lord convicted me. Well, you need to go 40 days too. And so I've done 40 days now, 13 or 14 different times. And I, it, it, it's, it's a blessing. I look forward to it. Amen. There's got to be something wrong with you. <laughs> well, I, I'm telling you, I found out it works. He also said not only with fasting and prayer transform an individual or church, it can change the course of a nation. If we ever need to fast and pray and believe God to change the course of this nation, it's right now. Amen. We talk about gay people. I mean, I love everybody. And, uh, but uh, if you want to talk about sin, over half of the heterosexual people living together are not even married. They're shacked up together. So we don't need to be worried about a few homosexuals. We need to be concerned about the morality of all of us. And I mean, you, you, if you walk out of the door, you better be prayed up because somebody may shoot you. 
I mean, we live in a violent place, but I don't see any need to fast and pray. Well, maybe you need to read the Bible. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Uh, the pilgrims, you ever heard of them? In April 1623, they had no rain for 12 weeks. I mean, they didn't have a Kroger's down the way. If those crops fell, that was the end. They'd starve to death. They wouldn't any ships coming in loaded with food. They're out there by themselves. What are they going to do? They called a fast. This is history. They met in the blockhouse and fasted not very long, only just several hours. And it started raining and rained 14 days. It saved their life. And the Indians took notice and said, wow, God, this God of theirs answers prayer. They changed history. We need to change history. <laughs> Nineveh, Jonah chapter 3, verse 4, on the first day. You see, we're not just fasting and praying for me to grow hair <laughs> or to be healed. We're fasting and praying to turn this nation back to God and to turn this a nation, this this world away from World War III. We're sitting right on top of it right now. I don't care what all the prophets are prophesying. We're sitting right on the edge of World War III. Amen. On the first day, I'm a historian, history major, and I'm also a prophet. <laughs> I don't claim that, but God does show me things. We're in bad shape. This world is in bad shape. Coronavirus killed millions of people all over the whole world. Amen. I've never heard anything like it in my lifetime. A history major, I don't remember anything in history like it. It's starting to look like God is bringing judgment on the whole world. On the first day, Jonah start, started into the uh, city. He proclaimed 40 more days and Nineveh will be will be overturn at least I'm not putting a time limit on it in 40 days <laughs> verse 5 now remember the Ninevites are Gentiles they're not even God's people the Ninevites believed God they believed the prophet Jonah they didn't ignore him like most people ignore me they declared a fast and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth they began to fast and pray they believed God and turned to fasting at times, prayer with fasting may be all we have. And it may just be all we need. Verse 10, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. People say, oh, everything's fixed. You can't change anything with prayer. This says plainly they changed their doom by prayer. You can believe people or you can believe God. Believe his word. Even though God had predetermined to destroy him, he had mercy. He relented. They turned the judgment uh, to God by prayer. They turned the judgment of God by seeking him with praying and fasting and repenting. Let's all stop.